Hey, what's up, bookworms and Lord Ruler, Brandon Sanderson fans. Mike back with the long-awaited third review in the Mistborn trilogy, and that is, of course, The Hero of Ages. I apologize for the delay. Things just happened. No one ever expected this whole uh, virus that shall not be named thing to kind of take over the schedule or whatnot. But hey, let's get into it here. Let's talk about book three, the final chapter in the Mistborn, the original Mistborn trilogy. Uh, this is uh, obviously called Era One, and we'll talk about that here when we get to the end. I do want to let you know that since this is the beginning of the end for spoiler reviews on the channel, this is going to be a spoiler review for this book. So if you haven't read books one and two, I would turn back now. But guys, that, that format is getting retired after this. This is the last one. The only reason I'm doing it this way is because I did number one and number two like that. So this will have spoilers. So I, it's really going to be tightened up though. Those other videos were like 45 minutes. This one's going to be really tightened up. I'm going to glaze over a lot of things. So if you're wanting a beat for beat breakdown of this book, this probably ain't going to be it. And that's just probably, I'm just going off of the uh, the feedback that I received. People weren't too into that. So that's not going to happen here. If that disappoints you, I apologize. Look for my next weekly update to get a little more in that. Let's get straight into the review of Hero of Ages. Now, in my memory, this was my favorite in the trilogy. Think things might have changed upon a revisit. And I'm going to talk about that at the very end. But where we ended... Then released the power from the Well of Ascension at the end of the last book. And we learned that this... In this, when doing this, this was a trick by uh, by Ruin, and Ruin is actually the one that was unleashed there. At the end, he's like, "Ah, oh, I'm free," you know, just full on, just like evil. I'm thinking Demandre from <laughs> from uh, Wheel of Time. Sorry, getting those kind of mixed up at the moment. But uh, Ruin, he is one of the shards of uh, Adenalsium. I'm probably saying it wrong. Adenalsium. That's how I always said it. Whatever. But go back to my uh, Cosmere 2020 thing if you want an explanation for a little bit of what the shards really entail. I'll get into that a little more when I go to the Stormlight Archive because I feel like it's very much more prevalent in that series than this one. And in fact, I didn't even really gather all of the uh, the whole shard thing a ton the first read through I went through this. This is something that I feel like going back to it after I've read Stormlight. And it, again, at the time I read this, I didn't know this was like a, a connected universe. I just thought it was its own thing. This was my first experience with Sanderson, so I wasn't looking for these things. Now looking for these things, I see them, and I think it's really, really neat. But anyway, Vin remembers the Lord Ruler warning her that killing him would mean doom, and I think this is very clear what he was talking about. And I think the one thing this book does very well is it gives a little more context to the Lord Ruler, because I said I felt like it was a shame that he was a one and done in this series, but this makes him more than just, you know, the evil bad guy. It actually gives him a little more depth, a little more layers, and I like that. I like that. But uh, she does think that this means the terrorist prophecies were indeed bullshit, you know, just made up. And uh, it, it feels like I see where she's coming from with that. I didn't go a ton into the, uh, the, the the little bit of the little parts of the story it has before each chapter because it just there's some things I feel like you're just going to have to read. You know, I can't really just get into each of those. Like I said, these videos were already too long as it was, and they got even longer if I'd really got into the whole Rashik thing. But um, uh, Elin is now a Mistborn because he used that bead of uh, metal to to heal him. And, you know, when I was putting together these notes, I swear I, I, I kind of decided that, that that metal was like the preservation, like embodied into like metal. I don't know if that is actually accurate or not. That's kind of what I always kind of took it as. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't believe it's stated in the book or not, but I believe it is is the shard of, of preservation so uh i'm sure i will get corrected about that in the comments and of course that's fine that's fine i don't pretend to have a phd in the cosmere i know about as much of it as you know most first-time readers do i haven't went into the straight just hardcore studying deep dives in the lore and stuff like that so forgive me if i'm not an expert i never claim to be but uh the mists are even showing up during the day now and they are killing those that they touch uh, Tensoon returns to his people to convince them to work with humanity to fight Ruin, and they put him on trial instead. And uh, they take away his body, and they throw him in a pit, and they think, oh, we'll give him a dog because he won't like that body. And he's like, ha-ha, check this out. So he's back to kind of where he is. Unfortunately, Tensoon, not large in this book. I, I, I kind of felt like that, that ball was dropped a little bit. Uh, I, I and That, of course, is constructive criticism. Uh, I think that Sanderson is a great writer. Don't don't look at it like that. That's never what I'm saying. I, I just, I don't know. I felt like his buildup in the first two books 
was I don't feel like this payoff was kind of what we deserved with with Ten Soon. I, th- I expected more, I guess you say. So that's that's one problem I have with this book upon revisiting it. But I felt like that the first time. I felt like his story just kind of fizzled out when I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting. Anyway, uh, Marsh decides to go all double agent and follow Ruin until it's like time to screw him over, right? And like, yeah, that's gonna work, buddy. Uh, but Spook in this one, Spook has a kind of a bigger part in this book. Uh, he's been flaring tin constantly for like over the over the last year, and it's made his uh, you know, it enhances his 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 vision, and his vision's bothering him so much it's just sensory overload to where he's just like wearing like a full on uh, uh, like a, a blindfold now. But he starts to hear a voice, which he convinces himself is Kelsier. And uh, you know, we have these moments where he's in a burning building, and the voice tells him to escape and whatnot. He, he thinks it's Kelsier, and I want it to be. <laughs> I really, really wanted to be because I, I I miss Kelsier. But uh, Sezed learns that the people of Terrors, they aren't harmed by the mist. And that's that he spends pretty much the first two thirds of this book trying to figure that out and struggling with his faith. You know, all 137 of them that he has because, you know, he's trying to find one that makes sense for him. And, and, and that's, I feel like that's a, a kind of a growing thing for him in this whole series is yes, he knows all this stuff. He, he practices all these, he studies all these religions and whatnot, but he doesn't really find one that he can identify with so that's kind of like part of his journey in this one but uh vin going to vin and elon here vin tells tells elon yes i say elon live with it vin tells elon that she believes him to be the hero of ages i'm gonna lie at this point i'm kind of agreeing i kind of think okay that's i thought this whole time it was going to be vin but it looks like it's going to be elon now so okay uh but there's a ton of politics in this book i mean just a ton and it's basically where they're just trying to get elon more power more influence over everything, you know, so they can try to make moves that way instead of just trying to take everything by force. And it's it's good on paper, but I'm going to be honest with you, it's boring to talk about. If I sit here and tell you, it's going to turn into what my Well of Ascension video did. And I don't think anybody, I mean, I don't think anybody read these books saying the politics are so great, I just want to break them down forever. And so I'm just going to kind of glaze over that in this one. Uh, but after being taken prisoner and eventually escaping, uh, Vin's confronted by Ruin, and he gloats that preservation is dead, and he demonstrates his ability to control the Coloss. So, you know, that was something that uh, that Vin was able to do, but now he's able to do that, and he turns them against Elon's army. So they are up a creek, right? But uh, Marsh and the other Steel Inquisitors, fully under Ruin's control now, battle with Vin. I told you that wasn't going to work out, Marsh. But she loses, and Marsh begins to torture her, but regains a little bit of himself for long enough to take the earring out of her ear that I, I, I haven't really talked a ton about because honestly, I didn't remember, guys. Like I said, I read this three years ago and I think that's why these reviews haven't done haven't gone so well because I read these so long ago. So that's my fault. Uh, I, will, I will definitely do a better job of uh, trying to encapsulate what actually happened in further detail with my Stormlight reviews. But again... That's a, a conversation for next time. But uh, she loses, and Marsh begins to torture her, like I said. Takes the earring out, and then she realizes that the mists return to her, and she's able to heal herself, just like at the, just like with the battle uh, against the Lord Ruler. And I, I think when that happened the first time, I didn't really understand. I think it's about the whole metal spike being removed. They, ta- they, they foreshadow this a lot. With some of the other characters in the book, so it's it's a good moment. I I, didn't, I felt like it was earned, and and also for the people that are like, oh, Vin's a Mary Sue. She got her ass kicked right here. Uh, she is OP a lot in this story, and, and I get that. But you know, she did. She she got she got it handed to her here, and this is the only way she's actually able to come up. But after this, yeah, she's pretty much untouchable, right? And it's really really awesome scene. I, I don't have it, but she she kills all of them except for Marsh, and then she faces ruin after absorbing preservation's power and elon battles marsh and he eventually takes you know has an axe collapse his chest and i'm like no right because i love elon i know a lot of people were kind of like lukewarm on elon I, I i liked him a lot a whole lot and uh i didn't expect everybody to get out of this alive but a uh, full disclosure i didn't expect it to end how it did right and this is the beginning of it but uh he he does reveal uh that he has burned away all of ruin's body in, in, uh, and now Vin can, uh, Vin can kill him. Vin can, can kill him, can face him, right? So Vin realizes she has both Preservation's ability to create as well as Ruin's ability to destroy. And she attacks Ruin directly, killing Ruin, but also herself 
and preservation. So both of our leads died. Jesus, man. I I think it's because I didn't expect Sanderson to be so grimdarky, I guess you'd say. I, I didn't expect both of his leads to die in this. So that's why it was kind of surprising to me when it happened. And I know that this is a very, very divisive ending for, for a lot of people. A lot of people feel like it's too deus ex machina and other people feel like it's just right. Other people wanted a happier ending. Uh, to me, I feel like it was appropriate. At the time, I was kind of like, wow, that's that's rough. But, you know, I'm also a big proponent of, you know, the hero sacrificing themselves for the greater good. Uh, I don't have any problem with that trope whatsoever. So I actually liked the ending. It did break me the first time I read it, you know, because I loved both characters. I loved them as a couple. And it was just really, really heartbreaking. But uh, when it says Ed revealed is revealed to be the hero of ages, I was really shocked because he uh, he picks up the two shards and he ascends and 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 becomes a uh, well, harmony as in balance and harmony, you know. So that's uh, that was also just like if you had told me the beginning of this that these three characters would have this ending, I would not have believed that they got there. But I don't feel like it's cheap. I don't feel like it's not earned. I, I felt like it was, it was good enough and whatnot. But he he uses all of his knowledge that he kept in his copper mines to bring the world back to the where it was kind of pre rashek And, uh, you know, Skadriel is now normal again as credits roll. And, I mean, upon reflection, uh, while I think that Hero of Ages was a very satisfying ending, uh, I think it was my least favorite of the three now upon revisiting. And I, I think the reason for that is, and let me get this out first, I think all three of these books are wonderful. I stick to what I said in my Why You Should Read Mistborn. This is a fantastic series. I think everyone should read it. I think everyone who wants to read Sanderson, this is the best place to start. And I do feel like it's it's like a lot of these fantasy trilogies where it is one story. So, sorry, something has to be the least favorite out of a trilogy, right? Like, I love Return of the Jedi. It's the least best original trilogy of Star Wars. That's just how I feel about it. Something has to, to fall there. So when I say it's my least favorite of the trilogy... I don't mean it's bad. I actually think he stuck the landing really, really well. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's just, I mean, what you just heard me recap, I basically took out two-thirds of the book and I feel like it's still coherent because there's so much politicking. And like I said, that's tough to talk about on a booktube channel, at least for me, to do it in an interesting way. Because sure, it can be interesting while you're reading it, but getting a secondhand account of it and what I thought about the politics while they were going on, I don't think that's very interesting. So uh, if that's what you were looking for, I I I'm sorry. But uh, I don't want to call this book filler at all because all these moments matter. Sanderson's not a filler guy. I don't feel like that. I think there was one stretch in Oathbringer, which I'll get to when I do that review, that probably could have been omit. But it... Again, he's not like on the level of like Jim Butcher where every line has meaning, but I don't feel like any of this could have been cut out and the story would have been better for it. I'm just saying, I don't have to mention it here and the review still makes sense. So that's at least how I feel. If you go and tell me the review don't make sense, maybe I was wrong. But uh, he's definitely not guilty of that at all. So uh, I think Wealth of Ascension did the politicking better. So that's why I'm going to kind of put it above there. So I, I have had a lot of people tell me this series with them is that they weren't able to get into it because it was too politicky. Uh, it's, it's very true. It, and this is the one that showed me that uh, his politics could be better. Because I went to when I did Elantris, I was like, his, the politicking in that was super boring. This I think it's compelling. I think it's unexpected. It has good moments. It has some not so great moments, but it's still really good overall. So I'd rank them in order for my favorite one two and then three I, I think final empire was a brilliant setup i think the lord ruler was a much better villain overall than ruin was that's just kind of where i'm falling at so uh that's definitely gonna be my favorite i think well of ascension handled the politicking much better than uh hero of ages did and then hero of ages even though it had an ending that completely subverted my expectations in a way that didn't insult my intelligence i was fine with that but again something has to take position one two and three when you're ranking a trilogy but again all three of these books are four stars for me. That's almost... A five-star review from you is probably a four-star review from me. So that's really, obviously, the highest of recommends. Uh, but uh, you're going to find a lot, probably not very many fantasy trilogies out there as solid as this one. I think it, uh, it, it, it has... 
Oh, what's the words I'm looking for here? It, it has satisfying moments. It has heartbreaking moments. It has loss. It has victory. It has the ups and downs that you would expect in a story like this. And I stick by what I said when I was just going off of my nostalgic review for why you should read is that it is very, very rewarding. And I think you should definitely give it a chance. But I'm glad that I've started Era 2 now. And I'm not going to spoil anything, uh, but I've started Era 2 with Alloy of Law, and I'm glad that it feels so different. I said I didn't read Era 2 when it came out because I was satisfied with the way this ended, and I still am. And I didn't want a continuation of that, especially not 100 years later. Now that I'm reading it, I like that. I like that it's so far removed for it, and the characters from this are basically myths to those people. I love that. I love that idea. I love how different it feels. I love it kind of feels like uh, Firefly with, uh, with with Allomancy. That's awesome to me. I mean, I love Firefly and I love Allomancy. So I, again, this is my favorite magic system that Sanderson has created, even over, you know, Surge Bindings and, and, and Stormlight and all that. I like it over that. I definitely like it over whatever he had in Elantris. Uh, I, I think that Warbreakers was really cool, but this this has got to be my favorite investiture that he's created. And I make that, that alone makes this trilogy stand really high above everything and depending on how he ends stormlight uh right now i mean if his completed series obviously this is my favorite but uh stormlight archive is my favorite that he's doing right now unless he just completely botches it which i doubt with four and five you know i know it's going to be 10 books but he's going to do five and then five so i'm just i'm counting just the first five right now but uh that'll be happening in september guys so look out for that then uh but i i'm glad that era two like i said has such a different feel and it's not just the same time period and a different side of the globe, kind of like what Elantris did with Emperor's Soul. I'm glad it's just completely different. And thus far, Wax and Wayne are really, really cool characters. So I'll be doing that uh, next. Those will be non-spoiler. That's the transition that we're making on the channel. If you want more explanation for that, like I said, check out my weekly update videos where I talk about why I made that decision. But in the end, man, uh, this, this video is just like I said in my Why You Should Read. Highest of recommends. Pick it up, guys. I think you will be fine. It's the best starting port for reading Lord Ruler Brandon Sanderson. But now it is on to my first reading of Era 2. Uh, the first review for Aloe Aloe will be in June, and then July and August for the next two, and obviously not until next year for the last ones. After that, I'll be doing uh, White Sands. I'll be talking about White Sands before getting into covering Stormlight September, and then finally, rhythm of war there are some short stories and stuff i still plan to cover and get that in fact i did read 11th metal i guess i should bring up 11th metal just a kind of an introduction to kelsier in his very beginnings honestly i thought i wished it was longer i, I was liking it i was liking it to see how kelsier became the badass that we know right but it was just so short i read it over a cup of coffee in one morning so i, I just I know it's a short story, and that isn't just a, a cute play on words. It is a short story, but uh, yeah, I would have liked a. I would enjoy a whole prequel novel on Kelsier. I, I'll say that. So, Brandon, I know you got time. You write really quick. You can probably write a Kelsier prequel novel like on your plane trip somewhere. So, hey, I'm in favor of that. But guys, where would you rank this one? How would you rank the Mistborn trilogy? Uh, where would you rank it among Sanderson's uh, whole Cosmere? There are no wrong answers, guys. Drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. I apologize for uh, how long these reviews took to get done, but uh, I, I think that you'll appreciate the Stormlight Archive coverage much, much more. And uh, I think you're going to like the new format. I know it's not play-by-play, play, but I feel like when you got 11,000 subscribers on your channel and your videos are getting 2,000 views, it might be because you're doing spoilers. So we're just trying some new things. But I appreciate you guys taking this reminiscing trip with me, and uh, I will talk to you in the comments.